What's going on guys? This is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. We are back out here in Sand Hollow with the next version of our favorite mods to Axial Capras. Now, I can't really say that these are my favorite mods to Axial Capras because this is the first one that I've built in this way. This is more of a absolute all out Axial Capra build. This one's super wild and is crazier than any other Capra I've ever built. Essentially, if you took all the deluxe goodies and just stuffed them into a Capra, that's what we have here today. So at its core, SS Deluxe portal axles, which are very wide, and then they have a portal C that adapts to Capra style portal boxes. Works super cool. And then it's got the deluxe knuckles front and rear, brass front, aluminum rear. And with their specific knuckles, I tried a different set on these Cs. And you, I really strongly suggest getting the deluxe because it actually gives you the most steering range possible. Uh, I had some trio on there and they did not offer the same steering angle as the Deluxe themselves. So definitely stick with the Deluxe if you're going with those. Um, the servo is mounted behind the axle, but it lays down flat. Super wild setup. It's really cool. And then we've got the Nod 2 transmission, which means no overdrive, straight axle gearing. But we're going through portals, so it's got a ton of gear reduction. So that's going to help me be able to bind the car up and just push through. Uh, and then to go with that, I went with one of the most torquey motors available. I went with the Holmes Hobbies Revolver Classic, and we're running that thing on 4S. I believe it's 1200 or 1800 kV. I don't, I don't remember exactly. I'll be sure to put that up on the screen. I'm gonna do a full build breakdown with this. My original plan was to do the build breakdown and then the running, but the way things timed out, we're gonna do the running video first, and then we'll do a follow-up build breakdown. So I'm not gonna get too out into the weeds with it. But on top of all those goodies, it's also got deluxe loaded dice wheels with loaded dice weights, which means the weights actually hang down inside the channel of the wheel. This is something that I've used on my sportsman car as well as my MOA car. So this is like the lowest, furthest out position you can put weight down inside the wheels. It's super high performance stuff. It's got tungsten slugs inside the brass hangers. Really sweet. It's a pretty wide stance with the way I have it set up. I'll explain that more in a little bit. And uh, yeah, let's go hit the rocks and see how this build does. Axial capper cage, got about a 14 inch wheelbase, and then we got like five and three quarter inch tires from Deluxe, the Deluxe Goat Tires, Crawler Innovation dual stage foam on the loaded dice wheels. Let's check it out and let's go run over some really wild stuff. So this car essentially has new axles, links, skid plate from UC Fab, transmission, motor, the servos carried over, we've got an 8.4 volt BEC in there now, we changed out the motor. This is basically the Capra cage on an entirely different vehicle. So this has uh, been an entire new project essentially, and I've really been excited to get this thing put together. Just had some other stuff going on where this one kind of hung out on the shelf for a little bit, so we didn't get an update real soon. But I have very high hopes for this. Now, one of the craziest parts about this is this car is way bigger, longer, wider. It's got tungsten, and brass loaded up in the front and this car is lighter because we got rid of all the weight in the transmission we got that deluxe nod 2 trans a revolver motor with a holmes v3 esc which makes the outrunners quiet as you can hear it's it doesn't have that castle whine where they just screech And so I'm very curious how this thing's going to perform. It's also got 30% overdrive gears in the front knuckles from Deluxe. And their gear design's a little bit different, so it was cool to see that. Oh. First roll with the new build. What do you think, Sydney? She's excited to be out here today. Now I've been out here with some friends before, and this line was like a real challenge where People really struggled on it for a while, so being the first obstacle to try this car on uh, it may not look good for the car. We'll find out. I'm, I'm thinking it can do it, but it is a lot wider and longer than the other vehicles we've been playing with it. Okay, on a good line there. Now the links themselves, I actually ordered the links from Vanquish. They have builder link kits available. You can buy pairs of links, so, and in two millimeter increments, and these are titanium builder's links, so Vanquish has that available on their site. Deluxe also does link kits, but uh, I just didn't get them the dimensions I was after. 
I believe they also do high clearance links too from Deluxe. But again, personally, I just ended up going to Vanquish and grabbing a couple. I already ordered some things on Vanquish and threw a couple in the cart. But the steering angle on those axles are ridiculous. We're like over 50 degrees. Okay. Okay. Check that out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's a big, ugly climb. And this deluxe capper got it done. Very impressive. The Nod 2 transmission has a unique bolt pattern, and it's also different than Deluxe's portal transmission, just if anybody was curious. They are actually different cases, and uh, the mounting points vary just slightly. But the UC Fab offers a blank Capra skid, and so I got one of those so that I could drill it for any transmission I wanted. Now the Deluxe transmission comes with a little carbon fiber spacer so that you can space it up off your skid and get your motor away from the links if necessary, which I have to use because my motor is a larger diameter. And so it's very simple, but you, you can clamp that to your skid plate and drill down through those holes kind of as a template and it works out really nice. It takes a little bit of time and patience. You definitely want to have your car built to a roller so you know where your links and drive shafts and everything are going to be. And then drill your skid plate. That's my biggest advice there is just try and get the car as built as possible before you put your transmission in because you don't want your transmission to end up running into a link or something goofy. And also put your drive shafts on the transmission when you're figuring all that out. So you, your drive shafts have clearance on your links and your screws that hold it to the skid plate and whatnot. That's a very steep climb. Even with our 14 inch wheelbase, we're not quite able to get up there. I was hoping I could get a hook up on that top left. I do have a WDW axial capper winch mount. So we can pull our nose down in there. But not helping today. The car was upside down and it reminded me, check out how smooth and flush the servo mounts are on this thing. The belly of the car is super smooth and flat, but check out how those servos lay down behind the axle, then your servo horn goes straight up into the air, and you got your drag link off to the side over here. Super cool, here's our UC Fab blank skid. I did countersink it and then put the uh, flush screw heads in there and then up here as well. These deluxe axles are really cool because you can actually choose your pinion angle you want and then the C's are clockable so you can adjust your caster angle through the C hub. So that's really cool so you can position your servo on the angle that you want. So let's cover the wheel and tire setup one more time. These are deluxe goat tires. This is a competition style 2.2 tire. And I don't remember the overall height off the top of my head. I'll have to edit that in real quick. But then we've got Crawler Innovation dual stage foams. And these foams are made specifically for the loaded dice wheels from Deluxe. Now to run weight hangers in the front like we've got, you've got to have loaded dice wheels to give you the clearance internally to allow you to do that. You know what that is? My winch line was still tight and I didn't have the articulation that I normally did. That's why that tire was getting all weird on me. But this car, I wanted to run on big 2.2s, so I wanted a good long wheelbase, so I had to do custom links for it. And it's been a very fun project, so totally different axles, totally different link geometry. Now, unfortunately, I mocked up the car with the upper links going all the way out to the truss on the axle. And to get the best steering horn clearance, that's not I, how I needed to build it. So then I had to kind of cobble together the upper link setup for this car. And so they're not as pretty as they were supposed to be, but we got it built. 
I think this one's a bit of a challenge. All right. I don't know if we're getting up this next point, but made it up stage one. Luckily, that huge range of steering will help us out. Now, I think these are a 5.5 tall foam in the medium compound, if I remember right. There's 6.0 and 5.5, and I think if you do 6.0, you want to go soft because it's overfilled, and 5.5 is a little bit underfilled. So I did a firmer compound with a smaller foam, if I remember correctly. These are, the, these are the wheels and tires I originally built for my Sportsman. And so we borrowed them for this build. I could also use the wheels and tires off my MOA, but they are on a Proline Ibex pin tire. And I just thought these deluxe goats looked a little more aggressive and a little more appropriate for the cappers. Yeah, I don't think we're making it up and out of there. So I threw this on the scale last night without a battery in it, six pounds, two ounces. The battery I'm running is a 1300 milliamp 4S pack. So not, not a monster. It's gonna give us some better top end with more voltage with the outrunner motor. KV rating is revolutions per volt. So if you volt up, like going to 4S instead of 3S, you get more revolutions, therefore more speed. Now this motor barely clears on about three different spots, but we got it set in there just right. And it's actually one of the things that I really like about this car is how all the clearance has worked out. Because it, it just barely clears, but it does clear. Okay. I'd like to try and drop my front tire in there. And then I'm going to turn the servo down in the rear to really load up that rear tire of traction. It's slipping. Okay, let's... Yeah. But the biggest point about this revolver motor is that this is the longest revolver. And the longer the revolver you have, the more torque you get. And with this car, like I said, I, I knew I was gonna go out there and try and wedge it up. With the bigger tires, there's more binding. There's just more traction available. So I wanted a lot of torque and the Holmes had it. So I think this has like two and a half times the torque that a stubby revolver has. Ooh, that's that's close. Okay, that right rear is getting trapped in there, but I should be able to wiggle it out of there. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh man, that was close. Okay, I like this obstacle. This is fun. Got our tunnel out there behind us. But this is the kind of stuff I wanted to do. Stuff where you have to reach further and climb up bigger ledges. And with ultimate four wheel steer capability, like this thing has crazy steering angle. Lots of articulation. It's just a good buggy. Lots of gear reduction, lots of torque. All things buggy. and then weight really low in the front end. Yeah, good shot of those weight hangers on the inside of the wheels there. Like I say, they hang down in the channel of the wheel. It's a really cool product where you can make them work. And so the way I made these work is Deluxe has a Capra portal cover that is designed for weight hangers. Now there's, there's multiple versions where like some of them are just a 3D printed or a, a nylon weight hanger. This is a aluminum metal, an aluminum portal cover 
specifically for the weight hanger. So you can put the loaded dice weight hanger on it. They have a couple options for Capra, so you kind of got to research it a little bit. We're on our link pretty hard. We almost had it multiple times. Let's jump around back, see if we can get a better view of what's going on. We're into our door panel. Maybe we just need to drive into that bind a little bit. Yeah, that was it. Sometimes, man, you just gotta get that different perspective and make it happen. So this one, our car should be big enough to get that hook up on the top ledge. Ooh, it's a stretch. Okay, we're, we're holding on pretty well. Maybe go up a little further and then... Yep. Yep. Yeah, sick. Not real surprised that this thing is performing excellent already. As, uh, I mean, the list of parts in this thing, this should just be a monster, and it's kind of proving to be that. This is an area I don't play in a ton. I definitely want to get it out on some more familiar terrain and see how she stacks up on the hard lines, but so far, what an absolute beast. Super cool, all out performance Capra build. Right, Sydney? Yeah, she loves Capras too. So on that last shot, I just kind of drove out of frame and then I realized, you know what? I, it may be possible to actually continue on this line. Yeah, let that articulation work for us. See guys, flex is not always a bad thing. Sometimes it lets you reach the ledge down below without having your car like pitch forward violently. And then we're gonna be able to set the rear down with a lot of articulation. See, flex is not always a bad thing. Some people say too much is bad and I would agree there is a limit, but for a car like this where I want it to be super nimble and agile, a lot of articulation helps this one. Something on smaller tires? Nah, probably not. I like to have a little over one tire flex. But these are big tires, so it needs a lot of flex. Kind of got bound up on that overhang on the left side, so we're gonna try and get that one up a little more evenly. There it is, sick. So I had a very interesting email from Holmes Hobbies. I sent them a question about running this motor on 4S because it is not suggested for 4S. They only suggest up to 3S on this motor. I wanted this KV on 4S, so I bought it and sent an email and just hoped for the best. And uh, it was actually a very interesting re reason why they don't suggest this motor on 4S. And it's not because total RPM or anything, it won't explode under that many revolutions per minute. Some motors, like, if you get over 100,000 RPM range, like, you're in, you can get in trouble and your motors can break. This one should be nowhere near that, but they were saying because of the weight of the Outrunner, it's going to put more stress with those high RPMs on the bearing of this. And you're more likely to see bearing failure on the stator or the rotor, I don't know. Somewhere where the motor spins, you're gonna see more stress on that bearing of this car. Um, now, I know that the majority of the time, I'm gonna be doing pretty low speed stuff, and so I'm not real worried about that. But just like the gyroscopic effect of spinning something that heavy, when it starts getting jolted around and bumped from driving down the trail, it puts a lot more uh, stress on that bearing which I found just a really interesting reason why they don't suggest it. So I'm sure there's a reason. I trust Holmes hobby stuff. John Holmes is a bit of something of a mad scientist and I like a lot of his products. So particularly his motors and this V3 ESC has been awesome too. This climb in particular in this area, I've been crawling for years now. It, uh, actually ended up getting me my first ride in a buggy which is pretty cool 
and a, a real buggy. I parked my 1.9 Wraith on this spot, put up a picture on Instagram saying that I wish I had a Wraith in real life. Rich from Trail Hero shot me a message and was like, hey man, you ever want to go out in a real buggy? Let me know. Me being the idiot that I am, I was like, well, yeah, I want to go for a ride in a buggy. So I did, and then kind of got introduced to the scene, and you know, the rest is history, I guess. But West Desert Wheeler started on Instagram, and then uh, ended up losing my job in the firearms industry, and decided two days after that that I'd start a YouTube channel of off-road stuff, and now it's my main job. So thanks to everyone for their awesome support, for allowing me to do what I do. It's Wednesday, and I'm out here working, and I'm on the decline trail driving RC cars. So, not a bad gig, huh? But really though, guys, I really do appreciate the support. It, it means a lot, because you're literally supporting me and my family. Got a two-year-old boy who loves RC cars too, and it's been awesome to be able to get to spend the time with them like I do. Offering RC products like the WDW Capra winch mount has been a really fun endeavor. You know what? I don't think I've ever had a car make that pinch. I don't think I've ever done it. And I remember trying not too long ago in a video. It was it was something on cut and shuts. But this car just walked it, and it's it's wider than most of my cars, and it's longer than most of my cars. So that, Sydney, what, God, you're gonna push me off the ledge, dude. Dog. What the hell was that? What are you doing? She's trying to, trying to push me down that ledge. You believe that? Get out of here. Freaking dogs. I don't, I don't need kisses right now. Please, please go. Go lay down. Go away. Sheesh. I'm trying to get work done. Got a dog panting in my face. Yeah, it seems like all sunshine and rainbows, right? Till you got dog breath in your face. I bet a lot of people are like, dude, that sounds awesome. <laughs> I know Connor with Rock Pirates would say that. Uh, get it up there, get it up there. Maybe get that right left rear up. Oh, throttled through, we're in trouble. This little ledge is the only thing saving us. Damn, that was pretty close. Let's try this one more time. How did I get that done? I got the rear pinch just right the first time. Yeah, that's a lot better setup. There it is. All right. So portals and tall tires, you're more likely to get dog legged. Now luckily it's wide, so that helps combat that. But you essentially create more leverage to lift that rear axle on a side hill having a taller tire with portals because the center of pressure is above the center line of the wheel. So you're creating a longer lever with more leverage on it to push against and pick that top side tire up. So if you have a portal car that dog legs a lot, that's 
it's not really a surprise. Straight axle trucks will be a lot more resistant to that. And they do it in the full size cars too. I used to spot for a Jesse Haynes moon buggy, a three link car that did it occasionally. Dave Wong's car is a four link car and it has more articulation. And there are times where his will dog leg like crazy. It's just, you know, trade offs, give and takes. Added clearance with the portal axles. More dog legging, I guess. This wheelbase does not like this spot. And I'm just digging out all the sand that's really the only thing helping me. So you need to get that front left tire two inches up. Slid down right when I needed it to hold. Okay, little throttle got us up. I've driven this line before, so I know it's possible. And if it's possible, this car better be able to do it. A little bonus climb on that front left. It's not necessary. We can let our winch out. There we go. Make sure she's getting full articulation. And it's up and out. Now I'm pretty sure I did this one with my Chupa Capra build. Yeah, I'm really confident that it was the Chupa that did it. I know I did the line, but I backed down into it. So we're gonna see if we can drive forward into it. Now, the reason I would back into it is it's got a forward weight bias. So you continue to have more control with the front wheels staying up on top versus now the, the main center of gravity is in the front. It's gonna pull me down and could violently pull and upset the car basically. We got some crazy low wheel speed control. I'm also turning the tires in the rear to try and get the car to hook and hold it like that. And I wish I had dig right here, but I've just got a lot of overdrive and it seems to be working out. That worked out really nice actually. Now having a longer wheelbase certainly helped on a big drop like that. And then having lots of steering angle, easy to recover the exit. Just drive up and over that bush. No big deal. That worked out really smooth. That was nice. Well, I was just on my way over to find one of my old favorite hard lines and it looks like the rocks got moved or smashed somehow, whether just a larger rock fell on top of them and knocked them out, or a buggy drove over them, I'm not sure. But uh, unfortunately, no longer there. Which it was, a, it was a good technical one. So I guess I'm glad that I was able to wheel it the times that I did. It was a fun one. It's all right, we still got plenty of fun lines out here. And this is one that I did with my Trooper Capra. Now I remember when I did that drop, it was uh, during a video, the thumbnail says this Chupa eats cracks. Did this buggy eats cracks? Something like that. Chupa Capra on declined trail. That's where we're at today. So if you want to see more of this trail and area, check that video out. The Chupa has been gone for a minute, so it's an older video, but it's, it's in the video lineup. Speaking of, you can always check out my playlists on different vehicles I've got. I've got a Capra playlist that has a ton of videos in it with a lot of different kinds of Capras, different builds. This one's the wildest to have some that are stock or RTR reviews, or even just the different phases as I learned about the Capras and got better at crawling. 
Like that little tire float right there, that worked out real nice. So now we're gonna have to try and find a way to get this right rear up. Rock slider is gonna work out in our favor. So we'll see if our front axle is heavy enough. No, not quite. I was trying to pull the rear up in the air. And uh, unfortunately, pulling that front winch in did not give us the effect we were looking for. But the car is very steep, so it kind of made sense that it would pull the nose up. Let's, let's get a little crazier approach. So I got the left rear up. Just about got that rocker through. Now that left rear tire is kind of in control and providing the traction for the rear axle. Still got our fronts balanced. Okay, and there it is. So now I got to power through. See that motor cogging? That's because I'm really trying to slow crawl it. And uh, when they're in a bind like that, sometimes they don't want to. If you give it a little more throttle and power, they're pretty smooth, but not a big deal. It's a sensorless outrunner. Lots of torque to pull it through a bind like that. And the car did the line, so that was cool. Nice. Uh, there it is. Sweet. Guess we'll see if we can drop. Just a ridiculous drop now. Got to be ready on the throttle. Belly's going to drag a good amount. Got a pretty smooth run out if we need it. Like to throttle out as little as possible. Nice. Made it look pretty good for a big drop. Well, all right, guys, this is going to be our last obstacle for this video. I've had a ton of fun driving this car, and truthfully, I don't really want to stop. But I've got another video to shoot today, so expect some more footage on the Red Cat Ascent Fusion. Got some different tires on it now. And they're not crawlers, so be sure to check that video out when it drops. But nice little drop in here. It's a very tricky approach into this next crack, which I have never made. So we're gonna give this buggy a chance to prove itself here. That was cool to watch the suspension just completely twist and do opposite of what it was doing. I tried this with my Chupa. The width was just off. It just didn't work for the track width of the car. And then it got a little too steep for it as well. So we're getting that front left up. A little bit easier to get the front right up there. See, that kind of stuff is exactly why I wanted a torquey motor and a lot of gear reduction. It's tracking really, really well, but the rears are what stopped the Chupa. That's looking promising. We could just get our rears to pinch and pull. There, 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 there. Come on, there it is. All right, first car to make it up. I have no idea how the exit goes, but that's pretty rad. I also need to be cautious on this corner, this big overhang. Gotta watch our rears, because as it spins, your rears, if they're pointing the wrong direction, can just drive off the, off the balance.
broke a piece of rock off. That's how much of a bind we're in. Okay, let's get around front to check our drop. Okay, this looks real ugly down in here. This will be fun. Oh dear, don't don't drop. Okay. Front hit the bottom. That's that's not good. I think we're gonna make it out of here. The question is, is how pretty are we gonna be able to do it? Whew. And I think the answer is not very pretty, so. Oh, come on car, follow the front axle. <laughs> completely sideways never been done obstacle now conquered with our new deluxe capra and truthfully did it fairly easy i just kind of fell off the line there at the end this line is just about eight feet further up the same canyon so i guess it's part of the same obstacle we'll try and knock this one out quick and let you guys get back going with your day let me know what you think of this deluxe capra build ss deluxe portal axles super sick even the straight axle version of these which is essentially just a straight axle c-hub is a really nice set of axles and i love that on the portals you can clock the c's so you can change your pinion angle as needed which also in turn would affect the angle on your servo and your diff so they're a little more modular than other machined aluminum axles available so that's pretty cool. And for custom builds, modularity helps a lot. Not being stuck with one specific thing. I think we're getting low on voltage and our motors getting a little more twitchy. There it is, crawling out the top, the Deluxe Capra making it happen, getting out of this canyon. Love it. This thing's a beast. All right, friends. My name is Logan with westdesertwheeler.com. Be sure to check out Deluxe Fab. I will have them linked down below. Thank you very much for their support here on the channel for this project. They make really high quality, high performance stuff. So if you guys care about hitting hard lines, you've probably already heard of Deluxe, but if you haven't, be sure to check them out. They offer a lot of stuff. There's a lot of things up on their website, but I appreciate your time. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you guys in the next one. Keep the rubber side down.